Okay, so today we're going to continue with exercise 224. Um, we're going to change our scene to be a night scene. So this is the first, quote, night rendering that you get to do. We're going to start with an interior night rendering because it's easier than the exterior night rendering. So we are working our way through into the night rendering um, exercises. But I'm going to spend some time talking about how do we convert the scene into a night scene. And then uh, I'll talk about rectangular lights, which is a kind of light that we haven't dealt with just yet. Um, and there's some intricacies about how rectangular lights work, but they're really useful in certain contexts. So I'm going to walk you through kind of how that works uh, as part of this, this setup for today. But before we get started, we need to convert our scene into a night rendering. And at this point, we kind of have two options. And it depends a little bit as to where you are in your modeling process as to how you decide to proceed. And what happens is we have daytime renderings, and then obviously we have nighttime renderings. And it changes a bunch of the V-Ray settings when we go from day to night. And so if we work with the same file, if I use the same master file that I've been working with, and I decide I want to go back and do daytime renderings, it's a little bit of a problem because I have to go back and redo all the settings for the daytime renderings. And so there is a way around it. It doesn't always work perfectly, but I'm going to show you that strategy. Uh, and then the other option would be to just have two separate master sites. One is for nighttime renderings, the other is for daytime renderings. Assume, assuming for the moment that you set up your site to, to use the block reference that comes in, the building is going to be the same in both as you continue to update the building. The light geometry is going to be the same as you continue to update the building. But if you change the actual V-Ray lights in one, it's not going to update in the other. Uh, which can be a little bit problematic. So there's advantages to that because you just have two separate files. You don't have to worry about ever changing the nighttime background, HDRI, or anything like that. But it can be a little problematic down the road if you add more lights or change. So if you're very far along in your modeling and you already feel like you have all your lights in the scene, there's not really any harm in having two separate files because you already have those established. If you haven't done it too much yet, you may want to continue with the same file. So if I wanted to continue with the same file, before I do anything, I'm going to go to my V-Ray options. And in the V-Ray option editor at the very top, you may have seen there's a little save disk. Okay? This V-Ray option editor will allow me to save a VizOpt file, which you've loaded before, that has my daytime information in it. So at this point, before I changed anything, I would go to my um, folder. And I would say this is my uh, master site uh, day rendering settings. Okay, And then I'll go ahead and click Save. That then saves all of the settings that are in here, Okay, which should include things like your background HDRI. You still need to have the original images in the same place, but you should be able to flip back and forth between the night and the day settings by saving these VizOpt files. Should is the key word. It might not work exactly as planned, but the hope is that it's pretty close. So I'm going to proceed in that vein. The other option would be to do a file save as and save your Rhino file as a master site day, master site night. Right? And then there are two separate files that you're working with. It's up to you which way you go. Okay? I'm going to stick with this for right now. OK. so. At this point, we need to switch the background to be nighttime settings. And the easiest way to do that, and if you look at today's handout, right, we, I walk through uh, 8.24 and 8.26, and I tell you, you can download the night HDRI file. The other thing that I've started doing, which I think helps people a lot, is I have a special quick, quick huh, I can't talk today, quick rendering setups page which gives us a bunch of presets that are easy to work with. Right? You may have seen these for the daytime renderings with the clouds before. Um, we're going to move down to the nights. So I have a basic night scene 1, a basic night scene 2. And then I also, down here, have sunset scenes. Okay? If sometimes the night scene works kind of well to have a sunset scene. Okay? Technically, for your final, I don't care if it's a night scene or a sunset scene. The point is, there is no sun if that makes sense. Okay? So in this sunset scene 2, the sun is definitely below the horizon. Therefore, it will qualify as, quote, night, right? even though we have a, a sky background. Um, but it's up to you. 
right? This one's kind of marginal because the sun is technically right there, but I'd probably let you go with it, okay? So I'm going to use either basic night scene one or basic night scene two. Uh, it doesn't matter which one I elect to use. Let's go for basic night scene one for whatever reason, okay? So I have a bunch of things that are set up for you. I tell you what all the camera settings should be, etc. But I also down here at the bottom have a download the night Milky Way um, V-Ray settings, the VizOpt file. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and say save link as. And I'm going to save it, I hope, into today's folder. Actually, I'm going to put it in uh, 219's folder because that's where all of these files are existing right now. Okay, so this is the Night Milky Way IRBF VizOpt file. So I'll go ahead and save that. I'm also going to need the um, HDRI background. So I want to make sure that I download that as well. There's a direct download or you can go to the HDR Labs site that actually has the file to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and download this as well. And it's going to come down as a zip file. I want to make sure that once it's down, I extract it and put it on my flash drive in a place where I can find it. Okay? I already have this one on my flash drive, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm going to go back to my Rhino file. And it's, I've already saved my current day settings. I'm going to go to the next one over, which is load. And this is going to load my night settings. By the way, the easiest way of confirming that it did, in fact, load is to leave one of the drawers open. So see how I have the environment drawer open? When the new settings load, that will close. And I get confirmation that it loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and go to load. I'm going to go to, there's my night settings. I'll go ahead and click on open. And in a second, the drawer closed. I know that it loaded up my new settings. I do, however, have to check to make sure that the settings are correct. So let's go to environment first. And let's go find my maps and make sure that they're in the right place. So this is Milky Way Light HDR. Chances are it's not there anymore. So let's go find. I'm under Resources, V-Ray. I have all my HDRIs saved here. I have Night HDRIs, the Milky Way. And I'm going to use the Milky Way Light. And then I'll go ahead and say OK. We'll do the next one, which is the background. This is the Milky Way Small.HDR, Milky Way Small.HDR. I'll go ahead and say OK. So now I have both of those set. The files know where they go. I can double check the settings. Looks like I say the refraction, uh, the background is 0.1. The skylight is 0.5. Let's confirm that those are set. Background is 0.1. Skylight is 0.5. So you see how the VizOpt file preloaded that information for me. That's the idea behind the VizOpt file. OK, so we're going to assume that the rest of this stuff is set correctly. The camera settings are on at 100, which is what they're supposed to be. The only piece that isn't set is what my output is set for. Okay, So I'm going to have to go back in and reestablish my view and my output. Uh, and so we'll get to that in just a second. So let's move into the inside of my um, view here. I'm going to go to set camera, or excuse me, set view. And we'll go back to my interior render 2. And there we are inside. Okay, So this was the one that I set up from last time. I already have the lights. It's as simple now as going ahead and rendering it. Right? The light settings should be the same, but the background, instead of being sunny, should be off. But I do need to make sure that I turn off the sun. Okay? So on my layers, I have a layer for sun. We're just going to turn that sun off to make sure that that doesn't render anymore. So now that that's there, let me go to my options. I'm going to do a, let me get the view aspect here, and we'll lock it. And then I'm going to do a tiny one, 218 by 100. We'll do a quick little render and see how it turns out. Again, I, I still haven't changed my light not to have a pink shade. So <laughs> I need to make that adjustment. OK, so we can see good news. right? The sun is no longer there, which is not streaming through the windows anymore. And if we look out the windows, it's essentially black. That would be a night render. So you see where the interior night render isn't that challenging. You just have to make sure that it's dark outside, okay? which it is definitely dark outside now. Now, I also promised you that I'd spend a little bit of time talking about uh, rectangular lights and how they work in a particular scene. So I'm going to go ahead and move around 
in my building so that I'm looking at my stairs. Okay, so there's my stairs. And let me, I'm going to recenter my zoom on that object so that I'm a little closer to the stairs. There we go. Okay, so what I want is I want some underlighting to the stairs. I want to have a little light that casts from one stair to the other, as if I put like a, a little uh, LED light under the stairs and cast that light. And so the easiest way to create that style of light would be to use something called a rectangular light. And the rectangular light is essentially what it's saying. It's a rectangle that casts light. It's kind of like a light that would be like that, okay, up above you, when we're looking at it as kind of a big rectangle that's casting light. The problem and the reason that I don't introduce it early on in the process is because the settings vary depending on the size of the rectangle. So I can't just say, oh, just use the wattage that is uh, you know, equivalent to a bulb and it will work, right? Because the size of the rectangle varies. The other thing is the direction changes. So there's a bunch of options that have to do with the rectangle that we need to kind of go through. So I'm going to go ahead and create my first rectangular light. And if we come over here, it's the second button over that says Create Rectangular Light in my V-Ray Lights toolbar. I'll go ahead and click on that. And it says Rectangular Light Corner. So let's go ahead and start at this stair here. We'll do that is the first corner. My light length will go across to the second corner. There it is. And then I need my width. And so let's do maybe halfway here, something like that. I now have a rectangular light. I didn't go the full stair. OK, so there's the light. That's fine. But remember, my light has to be independent of objects. It has to be floating. So I need to move it vertically, maybe, you know, I don't know, a quarter inch, negative 0.25 inches. So it's slightly below my surface. The other thing is it intersects the, uh, the glass a little bit. So I'm going to change that. I'll do a scale 1D. And Let's take this from the full size here. And we'll make it slightly smaller, something like that. OK, so now it's smaller than my stair. It's floating below my stair. But we still need to make some adjustments to it. So let's go ahead and go to the properties. Let's go to the light properties. And we're going to make sure that it is obviously enabled. The color, we're going to set it the same way, 255, 214. 170. We'll say OK. We're going to change my radiant power to be watts. And we'll start with, say, 30 watts. Okay? Again, we're going to have to do some tests to see what's the right strength, because it's dependent on the size of the rectangle to begin with. Okay? So the other thing is, I can choose to have it double-sided or single-sided. Right now, I have the arrow pointing down, which is the direction I want the light to go. But I can choose to have that rectangle cast in both directions. For right now, I just want it down. That's OK with me. Okay, So we're going to uncheck that. The other thing is, this is the one V-Ray light that will show up when you do a rendering. So you'll see the rectangle as lit, like it was an emissive material. Okay, I don't want to see the rectangle. I just want the light to be there. So I'm going to check invisible so that it doesn't show up as a rectangle. The other thing is, you notice where I chose to use this rectangular light doesn't have a light fixture because it's tucked under the stairs. So it's a great place to use it when you're not really trying to show the light. Okay? There are a few circumstances where a rectangular light might work if you had the light fixture itself. But most of the time, you're going to use a spotlight or a point light for uh, a fixture where you see the light. This is more for behind the scenes lighting, so to speak. So uh, I went ahead, and it's, it's not double sided. It is invisible. I do want there to be de decay. All right, and the rest of these options are all fine. If the arrow was going in the wrong direction, you can type flip, oops, and the light would go in the opposite direction. So I, obviously, I want it down, so I'm going to type flip again. And now it's going down. Okay. So before I move on here, I'm going to do a test render to make sure. So once again, my options are really small. And then we'll go ahead and hit the Render button. And let's make sure that this light is, in fact, casting. Okay. 
and we can already see in the blurry version that the light is casting, which is what I want. Just like with point lights and spotlights, we could have a bad light bulb, right, where it just doesn't work. That's why I always do a test before I actually uh, use it. And so we've got, very nicely, we've got the rectangular light casting. It looks like my wattage choice was about right. No surprise, I've done it before. I kind of knew what to guess at, right? But if this was a lot bigger, I'd have to increase the wattage because it's spread out over more area, okay? So that looks, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. It's providing the lighting condition that I want. Once I have that, we'll go ahead and copy it. And I'll copy it to the rest of these stairs. And I'll work my way up the stairs. Come on. Let me turn off center. I keep snapping to the wrong things. There we go. Stop. Turn the ortho off too. There, and the last one right there. Okay, so now that I have those all set, I can get my view set to something that would show the stairs a little bit better, maybe like that. And then we'll go ahead and do another test render and make sure that the, the lighting is the way that I want it on those stairs. So one of the challenges when you move from the daytime renderings, obviously in a daytime rendering when you have windows, there's plenty of light inside the building. When you do a night rendering, if you don't actually install the lights, you get areas that are really dark, right? And this happens at your house, right? You know that, uh, you know, wherever you're living, oh, well, I had to add extra lights to the living room because it's really dark when I walk in there, or the corners are dark, so I put a lamp in the corner or whatever. When it's nighttime in your V-Ray rendering, you have to compensate, you have to add more lights. So I would guess that you'll have to add more lights today to do the interior rendering. So spend your time, make sure that you have a few additional lights, you like the settings, et cetera, and then you'll start to get a pretty good quality night rendering as well. Okay, so I'm gonna let this finish up as it's small scale, make sure it turns out the way I want. Uh, remember to save your views, and this is another good thing with uh, using the VizOp file to change from night to day, is that if you establish new views, you can go back and see what it looks like during the day, see what it looks like at night, and kind of keep evolving. So to me, it's the best solution to keep flipping your VizOp file. Just recognize you may have to go in and, and make a few setting adjustments, okay? So there it is. We can see that I, I have my lights coming off. This first one seems a little bit bright, so I may, it's probably because the floor is so close to it, I may need to decrease the wattage there just to make it look the way I want, okay? So before I move on though, I have the night settings the way I think I like them. So I'm gonna go back to my options. I'm gonna go to save, and I'm gonna call this master site night rendering settings. And I may add something for interior, just so that I know this is the interior set that I'm using. Now that it's set right, I'll save it, and then I can go back and reload that, okay, which is the advantage. Okay, so today I'm not gonna talk for particularly long-winded time. I just wanted to introduce the concept of a rectangular light. Uh, I want you to spend your time continuing to model, get these lights set, make sure you bring in the settings um, the way that I did where we use the quick rendering setups. If you don't wanna use the quick render setups, you can set it up manually. If you find an HDRI file uh, that's a night scene that you like better than one of mine's, by all means, use it. Right, these just happen to be a few that I found that I thought worked out pretty well. If you do use something else and it's free, let me know because I'd love to add it to the list so that other people can, can use it as well. All right? Are there any questions for today? No? All right. I'll turn you loose.